how to live in your house, own a house, but not have a mortgage payment. It is awesome. Stick around and I'll give you the best tips for this. My name is Heidi Knowlton. I'm a local realtor and my YouTube channel is All Things Real Estate. So if you are looking to learn more about real estate or explore neighborhoods in the Salt Lake Valley, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you're notified every week when a new video comes out. House hacking is when you live in your house and you rent out a portion of your house and that rent that you collect helps pay for your mortgage payment. When you buy a home this way, um, one of the great things is that you're able to buy it as a conventional loan or an FHA loan, or if you're in a rural area, you can use a USDA loan and get zero down. So it's a huge benefit to be able to buy conventionally versus having to buy an investor loan because then you have a higher down payment. Whereas if you just buy a conventional, like you're gonna occupy the house, then you have um, a lower down payment, but you also have investment opportunities at the same time. So there are several ways to do this and it's actually a pretty popular thing to do here in Utah. The first example is buying a house and it has a basement apartment in it. So you would, you know, live upstairs, you and your family, and then down below you would have renters below you. Usually in this situation, they're covering about half your mortgage payment, which is great because if you have a $2,000 mortgage payment and then you're only paying $1,000, I mean, that's awesome. That's great money that you're saving. A second way to do this is renting out rooms. So you live in the house, typically you would live in the master bedroom if you wanted to, and then you would rent out the rooms around you. So this works really great for people that don't have a family yet. It could be a married couple, it could be a single person, um, whatever family dynamic you have, this works well when you don't have kids yet. So I have clients that are in college that do this or people fresh out of college and they're wanting to get into real estate, but they don't have a family yet. They don't wanna buy a big house. So you buy a condo or you buy a townhome, whatever you prefer, and you live in the master bedroom and then you rent out the other bedrooms to other people. And this is the way to live for free. So for example, if your mortgage is $1,500 and you've got three other bedrooms that you're renting out at $500 each, that's $1,500 that you're collecting and now you're living for free. Um, you could also not live in the master bedroom and rent out that master bedroom to somebody. You're gonna get a higher amount of rent for that bedroom. And then you live in one of the smaller bedrooms that does not have its own bathroom. And now you are cash flowing to live in your own house and you do not have anything coming out of your pocket to pay your mortgage every month. This is ideal. This is a really great situation. And further down the line, when you're ready to move up into a bigger house, you can either keep this house and rent it out and then cash flow every month from it. You'd probably cash flow $500 or so. And then you could use that $500 to save or you could put that $500 towards your new mortgage payments. Let's say you wanna go buy a detached house now, you can use that money and apply it towards the new house for your mortgage payment. So now you have one rental property that's paying for itself and then you have your own personal residence and you're getting cash flow from your first rental to help pay for your current mortgage payment. And then if you bought a house and put renters in the basement, you are gonna have a really low mortgage payment. So these are some really great strategies to lower your mortgage payment and also get into real estate investing. And I highly recommend it. I help clients do this all the time. I teach them how to do it. I hold their hand the whole way and give them the tips and all the advice so that they are really getting a great investment. Stay tuned to the end because I'm gonna tell you the ideal property, exactly what I look for, what the parameters are to find a house that is really great to rent out and also cash flows. When I'm looking at numbers, I'm looking for an ROI of at least 10% and cash flowing of at least $300 every month. And those are hard numbers to find. They are tough. My first rental property took me about a year to find those numbers, but they are out there. There are off market deals out there that are not listed on the MLS. And with those, you can find great opportunities. So if you're looking for anything like that, please reach out to me. I can put you on my off market list and let you know about investments when they come across my desk. So when it comes to marketing to find a renter, I use KSL and what's great about KSL is that they have their own application process. So when you have a tenant that wants to apply to rent from you, they just go on to KSL and they pay for the fee. You don't have to worry about any of that. And they, and you will receive the credit report and a background check on the prospective tenant, which I highly recommend to do a background check so that you know that they have a clean record. Okay, next let's talk about location. So where do you wanna buy a house like this? So I would recommend being close to colleges because college students always need housing. And that is a really great location where you're never gonna have a problem getting a renter in your home. Also being close to major cities like downtown Salt Lake or just anywhere in the Salt Lake Valley, we are definitely short of housing right now. So there are lots of renters out there looking for houses and rooms to rent. So um, the further west you get or the further east you get, it's a little bit harder to rent out rooms or rent out um, any space, but you'll definitely be able to find renters no matter where you are. Um, I personally like to stay close to Orem or Provo 
or closer to Salt Lake City because those are college towns and you're going to get more students there. So the downside to that is that you're going to have higher turnover. So just know that you're going to make more money in cash flow, but because you're renting out rooms and because you're renting out to students, you're going to have a higher turnover, but you make more money. So for me, it's worth it. So for me, this is what the ideal property is. I'm sure it's different for everybody, but what's perfect for me is to find a three bedroom, three bath townhome. And the reason for that is if each person has their own bathroom, you are definitely going to cash flow more money. People really want their own bathroom. It's really popular. You can charge $600 or so for a room that has its own bathroom, sometimes even higher. Also, you only have three tenants to manage. In most cities, the max is three people if the owner is not living in the house. So if you're living in the house, you can do a four bedroom and rent it out to three other people. But let's say it comes time for you to move out and you want to get into a single family home, you still can only rent out your house to three people in most cities. So the way to maximize that is to get three bedrooms and three bathrooms. So everybody has their own bathroom. You're gonna get about 18 or so hundred dollars a month, give or take, and you should be cash flowing at that point. I also like townhomes because of the HOA. And I know a lot of people don't like HOAs and some people love them, everyone's different. Um, but I like having an HOA because they do all the yard maintenance for me. I do not have to hire anybody to come out and mow the lawn or worry about it being done wrong or you know any of that. I don't wanna have to manage that. So I'm glad that I'm happy to pay an HOA that will take care of exterior maintenance, exterior landscaping, snow removal for me. To me, it's definitely worth the money. I do hear a lot of people say that they do not wanna be a landlord because they don't wanna manage tenants. Well. Let me tell you to hire a property manager. It is a life changer. So everything's off your plate. The property manager will handle everything for you. They'll come to you if there's a repair needed and they'll still take care of it for you. You'll just have to pay for it. The price for property managers are about eight to 10% of the monthly rent that you collect. So it's not bad. Make sure you budget that into your numbers when you are running numbers to buy a property. That's another important tip is that you need to run numbers before you buy any investment home. You need to run the numbers. If you need help with this, please reach out to me. All my contact information is down in the description below. Um, I do have a subscription to a company that runs numbers for me. So I put in all the data. It gives me your cap rate. It gives me your ROI. It tells me what your house is going to be worth in 10, 20, 30 years if you hold it long term. So if you need help running numbers on any investment, please reach out to me. That is it for all of my house hacking tips. If you want to chat more about this or look into options for yourself, please reach out to me. All my contact information is below in the description. Don't forget to like and subscribe and you'll get notified if you hit the bell every week when I put out a new video. And I will see you on the next video.